take a look at a second example of using Newton's second law and free body diagrams to analyze a system. Here we have a duck that's going to push a box up a ramp. Way to go, duck. And we want to figure out what the acceleration of the box was and what the normal force on the box was. Now we're ignoring friction. Obviously the duck couldn't do this without friction, but uh, we're just ignoring it for the moment. So the steps are draw a free body diagram and we need to draw and label all the forces acting on the object. And so there's our box. Notice I have it tilted so I can tell it's on a ramp and that helps me draw my forces. You can also draw a dot. You just have to be a little more careful. Weight acts straight down so I'll put that on first. And then the normal force uh, by definition is perpendicular or normal to the surface. And so notice I can draw that a little easier with my tilted box than if this was a dot. And then we also have the force from the duck, and we usually draw the force vectors with the arrow starting on the free body diagram and then going in the direction of the push. If you drew an arrow like this, uh, that's not really wrong, but it's kind of frowned upon. And so you start your arrows on the free body diagram and have them go in the direction of the force, if you know it. And that, now we need a coordinate system, and we want to put one axis in the direction of the acceleration, and so we're going to tilt our coordinate system. And so the plus x direction is parallel to the ramp in the direction of the acceleration. The y direction will have no acceleration. We, that's one of the reasons we do this. It makes things easier. And so now we want to write f equals ma for each direction. And so let's look in the x direction first. Uh, we have the force from the duck, which is a given, and then we have some of the weight acting in the negative x direction. So this component of the weight is acting down the ramp, trying to keep the duck from pushing the box up. And so we can see that we have a positive force from the duck and a negative component of the weight. It's the opposite side, so it would be mg sine theta. And so that adds up to MA. So I've replaced some of the forces in the X with its equivalent for this problem. That's where this comes from. It's adding all the forces in the X direction. Now we look in the Y direction. Some of the forces equal MA, but as we uh, noted, the acceleration in the Y direction is zero. The box is not going to move perpendicular to the ramp in the normal direction. And in the y direction, I have all the normal force and then the other component of the weight. And so the adjacent side is in the negative y direction. And so the hypotenuse is mg. So I'd have mg cosine theta for the downward force. And so now I've got two equations, two unknowns. The rest is kind of algebra. So you just solve for the unknown, substitute the given quantities. And so in the x direction, uh, we can solve right for the acceleration. We know everything else. And so substituting in the uh, force from the duck and the mass and the angle and the mass again, we get 0.7 meters per second per second. And so looking up in the y direction, the normal force is mg cosine theta. Notice the normal force equals the weight if theta is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And the normal force would be zero if theta was 90. And so that makes sense. So it makes sense that we have mg cosine theta for the normal force, putting the mass and the angle, and we get the normal force is 37.5 newtons. So it's not equal to the weight. So if you want to uh, practice one like this, just change the unknowns. And so if they gave you the acceleration and the normal force, um, could you solve uh, for the force from the duck? and the mass. You know what the answer should be. See if you can start from scratch and do this one.